Hi everyone, I am Dr. Ravina from Zonas, NHS Women's Health Doctor, and I'd like to welcome you to this dedicated channel for women's health. Today we'll be covering polycystic ovarian syndrome treatments, and this is a follow-on video from the previous one where we speak about PCOS, what it is, how to diagnose it, and symptoms that you may be suffering from related to PCOS. And I know personally that this is a massive issue to so many women. Um, and the statistic is around one in five women can have PCOS. So I think it's really important to talk about what we can do for you to help you with these symptoms and help you manage this in your everyday life. I hope you enjoy this video or podcast if you're listening to this instead. And if you prefer to listen to podcasts, we do turn all of our videos into podcasts, which is available on the Fertility and Femtech podcast, available anywhere you access your podcasts. If you have any specific questions that you'd like me to answer, please pop them in the comments below. Feel free to private message me on Instagram at dr.ravina, or please email me if you'd like to do that instead. So let's get right in. First, I'd like to cover lifestyle. So we'll be covering lifestyle, then medicines, and then also surgical solutions that um, can help you deal with PCOS. So as mentioned in the previous video, in PCOS, you may suffer from symptoms like acne, excessive hair on your body, obesity, diabetes, reduced fertility. So how can we first tackle one of the most common symptoms and one of the most common ones with at least 50% of PCOS sufferers having this is obesity. And in terms of conservative factors, the first thing we have to say is trying to optimize your life so that it's the healthiest it could possibly be. And this is a, a holistic plan. So that means we like to target your diet. What we like to encourage is reducing carbohydrates, improving the amount of, increasing the amount of protein that you have, vegetables that you have, fruit that you have, reducing the salt, refined salt, sugars, fats. Basically, you want to have a Mediterranean type diet where you're having lots of vegetables as well as protein, specifically fish, more olive oil in your diet, um, and just staying away from sugary drinks as well, um, because those can all increase your sugar content, your fat content um, in your body, which means it's likely to contribute to obesity and make it harder for you to lose the weight. So one is diet. Two, exercise. We want you to have at least three episodes during the week where you are really exerting yourself. So this means maybe a moderate to quite a high intensity workout. Um, I personally quite like doing HIIT workouts. I think um, HIIT's really effective. Um, I find it's really good for not only um, staying fit and healthy, but I think it's really good with your mental health as well. I think that's a great way for you to stay active and help with weight. And the third thing that we like to encourage in terms of the conservative measures is to educate patients. We like to encourage people to read up about polycystic ovarian syndrome and know about the risks of having it and the consequences it can have to your life. So specifically, it can increase your risk of type two diabetes. And it can also increase your risk of cardiovascular diseases. So by cardiovascular, I mean things relating to your heart, um, also your lungs, but specifically things like it can increase your risk of having fat and lipids build up in your arteries, which can increase your risk of heart attacks, strokes, clots in your legs. That can also be a risk of PCOS. So we want to keep you aware of this so that you can spot things and you go for regular checkups and screening for, for diabetes. So that's number one, that's your lifestyle side of things. So one more thing that I want to mention is that with exercise, it does help our physical state, it helps us lose weight, it helps with our mental state, but specific for polycystic ovarian syndrome, it helps with your blood tests, it helps with your blood markers. So it can help reduce your circulating testosterone, it can help reduce um, that insulin resistance that you can get, which I explained in the previous video. So the increased risk of insulin resistance is what increases your risk of diabetes, but with extra exercise and um, doing it um, intensely and often, that can actually reduce your risk of having that resistance to insulin. So it can reduce your diabetic risk as well. And not only that, it also helps to regulate your periods. 
So starting with a really good plan and maybe you just need to have a bit more motivation. So signing up to a gym, having a gym buddy, having a personal trainer, going to gym classes, sitting at home and perhaps doing like YouTube uh, workouts, whatever works for you. Um, I think you just need to start with a plan on how you're going to fit this into your routine. So lifestyle is the first thing. The second thing is medicines. So with medication, medication, um, we generally start with the oral contraceptive pill. And the reason why we start with this as a way to control PCOS is because it helps to manage several symptoms. First of all, the pill helps to reduce your circulating androgen. So your androgen um, is converted to testosterone, which is your male type hormone and increases those symptoms of excess hair, acne. So the pill that we give for PCOS is called Dianet. Now Dianet works well because it contains a progesterone, which is an anti-androgen. So anti being against, androgen is the hormone that we want to reduce and that's the hormone that gets converted into testosterone. So it helps to reduce your testosterone levels. However, in the past, there have been a few papers that have shown that there's an increased risk of blood clots by taking this tablet. So we don't like to keep women on this tablet for too long because of those risks of clots. So that's clots in the legs, so also known as deep vein thrombosis, also known as DVTs, clots in the lungs, known as pulmonary embolism, um, and that can cause shortness of breath and difficulty breathing, and also clots in the brain, also known as strokes. So because of that quite severe risk, um, we like to make sure that our patients are really active, they have a good BMI, and we like to control their blood pressure, make sure they've got a, a good blood pressure. Um, and that's why you'd have a yearly check of these things if you're on the pill. Um, so make sure that if you are starting this pill, you do ring your doctor every year to make sure um, we're monitoring. So it doesn't mean we can't give it to you, but we would just need to assess your risks of having a clot and perhaps not keep you on it for too long. Generally, once your symptoms start clearing up, once your acne gets better, once your um, hair growth gets better, we then like to slowly take you off the medication. We don't like to keep you on it for many, many years. The second type of pill that we can give is something called Marvalon, and that's another type of oral contraceptive pill. And Marvalon works really well with people who specifically suffer with hirsutism. So male pattern hair growth. So, you know, the face, the back, the chest. And Marvalon works because it contains a specific type of progesterone, um, which is different to the type of progesterone that we normally give and it is thought to be very effective with reducing the amount of hair growth. This is another option that you can discuss with your doctor, but depending on your specific case and your risk factors, your doctor will decide whether this is something they can prescribe for you. So we've spoken about oral contraceptive pills as the first type of medication. The second type of medication is called metformin. Now you may have heard of metformin because it's the first line medication for type two diabetes. So if you know anyone with type two diabetes, it's probably a medication that we've started them on. So you're probably wondering why, are, why is metformin an option for me if I've got, got polycystic ovarian syndrome? Well, going back to one of the complications of PCOS is type 2 diabetes. Metformin works by reducing the glucose in your liver. So it reduces the amount of glucose that's produced in the liver. So therefore you have reduced glucose circulating around your body. And that means you're at lower risk of uh, getting insulin resistance which is the whole aim that we want to do here because insulin resistance can increase your risk of obesity, diabetes, menstrual irregularities, and so on. So by giving metformin, it actually tackles lots of, lots of different avenues. So it will cover the obesity, so it helps you to um, lose weight, but it's thought to be more effective if you've got a BMI of less than 35. So if you've got a high BMI, um, perhaps metformin isn't the best option for you. It helps with that. It can also help with uh, menstrual regularity, so it can help to regulate your periods. And it's thought to also reduce your androgens, so your circulating testosterone, to help with those symptoms. So metformin is a really effective option. So in the UK, metformin actually is not licensed for this use. So that means we can prescribe it for you. It's completely allowed, it's completely legal. Um, it just means it's not the use we usually give metformin for. We usually give metformin 
for diabetes, which it's licensed for. So this would be a non, a not licensed use for metformin. But we know there's loads of literature going back decades that shows metformin is really useful for PCOS. The next type of medication that you can get is spironolactone or uh, finasteride and this is actually only given under specialist guidance so you'd have to be monitored over time um, when you are taking this medication it can cause different effects on your body it can cause electrolyte imbalances um, but the way this medication works is it reduces your androgen so you don't get any of those horrible symptoms that you are experiencing and yeah it's thought to be some of my patients have found it really useful but of course usually you have to go through the pathway of starting with your lifestyle then trying the, the, the oral contraceptive pill and then trying something else before we rush you straight to a very specialized medication okay so those are the, the main medications we start with now specifically if you're looking to get pregnant and you're suffering from fertility issues and you're known to have polycystic ovarian syndrome then we'd like to do a deep dive into your your cycles and see how often you're ovulating how often you're having periods and whether we need to think about helping you ovulate there is medication specifically for this so um, these medications help to increase a hormone called fsh so FSH is known as follicle stimulating hormone. And if you have more follicle stimulating hormone, you're going to stimulate more follicles. So that helps more follicles to be stimulated and developed in the ovary and therefore allow an egg to mature and be released in order to be fertilized. So one of these medications is called letrozole and that works by increasing your FSH. Now, the good thing about letrozole is that it increases the rate of one egg being released from the ovary and the reason why we want one egg to be released from the ovary is so that you get pregnant with a singleton pregnancy singleton means just one baby in the womb rather than two or three or four and we know that there is a less risk to mother as well as less risk to baby by giving this medication and um there's a higher rate of live pregnancies so higher rate of babies coming out um, alive with using this medication. The other medication we can give, the other medication we can give is clomiphene. So clomiphene also works by increasing FSH, your follicle stimulating hormone. However, this one actually increases your risk of more than one egg being released from the ovary. So you might actually end up, you might have wanted one baby, but you might be ending up with two or three in the womb. And um, this sounds really exciting when people are like, oh, I'm having twins. Or if you hear someone else having, having twins, you think, oh, that's really exciting. It's really rare. But when you speak to a women's health doctor or an obstetrician, everyone's like, oh. and the reason why they get a bit nervous is because it is a riskier pregnancy because one human, a mother, has to support not one baby, but two or three. So you have to share the blood supply, you have to share the space in the womb, you have to share the nutrition. And there's all sorts of complications that can occur with having, um, having more than one baby. So um, the risks are higher if you take clomiphene, but it is very effective with stimulating your ovaries to release an egg. So that's for fertility. And also along the lines of fertility, there are surgical options. So you can have ovarian drilling or electrocauterization, which is where um, they stimulate your ovary to release an egg so that it can be fertilized. And that is through an operation actually um, almost drilling. It is basically drilling your ovary so that you can stimulate um, a follicle to develop to release into an egg okay so those are just the main types of treatments we can offer for people with polycystic ovarian syndrome if you have any questions please drop them in the comments below i hope you found this useful um and if you have actually had experience of any of these treatments i'd love to know what's worked for you and what's not because i'm sure there's many women that would love to have this conversation with other women that have gone through trying the pill or fertility treatments so um if you do feel brave enough please do because this is an open space for us to speak very freely and i hope you feel comfortable talking about it anyway i'll catch you in our next video and until next time take care bye